All right, continue with the EFI development here. So I'm trying to think what exactly I want to do next. Might add another menu option here to print some more things. I know one thing that I'm passing to the kernel, or that I'm not passing to the kernel, is runtime services and whatever else is available from the overall system table. So I think I can look at what we have there. Just check if there's anything else we need to add. Like the configuration tables, I'm not passing those. And those can be pretty important if you want to do full hardware device discovery, stuff like the ACPI tables, at least for x86, or device tree, device tree blobs for ARM or other platforms. Most likely only be available through these configuration tables. So we can add those, and then runtime services by their name are runtime, as opposed to boot time, before exiting boot services. So since we're exiting that now, we can see if runtime services will work for a loaded program or a kernel. So I think I'll go with that stuff for now before setting up a more full-featured sort of installer process by most likely looking at boot variables, which I think are also part of runtime services. So those would be good to add regardless. So I did make a yeah separate live file for, for parameters, I think. I just call it, yeah, kernel parms. So what I'm passing to the kernel is right now just the memory map or info metadata for the memory map and the graphics mode. So I'm going to add a couple of things here. I'll add the runtime services and the configuration tables so I don't forget to do this later. Probably just add them in from this system table here. I can just add in. I really could just pass the system table to the kernel and that might be easier. But some of these things like console input and output will be sort of null and void after exiting boot services so I don't really need everything from the system table, mainly just the runtime config, memory info, and graphics mode. That, that seems reasonable. So we'll just go with that. And I will have to add in a definition for the configuration table, so I'll do that as well. And as well as the, we'll just do the number of table entries, so we know how many are there. I'll put that afterwards, I guess, doesn't really matter. Okay, so I'll just add, add all of those in and get rid of this. So below boot services, I'll add in the configuration table sort of definition. That's how it is laid out here. That's probably all right. And where is that found? Oh, I have it pulled up in the spec. So this is in chapter four, the EFI system table from the UEFI specification 4.6. There's EFI config and properties tables. So these are, a configuration table itself is really just a struct with two members, a GUID and a pointer to data for that GUID. That's really all it is. The configuration table pointer from the system table is an array of these GUID pointer pairs. So if, for example, for ACPI, you'll have a GUID that specifies ACPI 1.0 or 2.0, and the pointer will point to the initial or start of memory for that data, for that ACPI data, for example. But there's other types that can be defined outside of the spec. There's a lot of tables you might have on your hardware that aren't really defined anywhere. Maybe they're in EDK2, maybe they're just specific to your, your laptop or your machine in general, whatever vendor made the firmware. But these are just a couple that you might be interested in. ACPI, for example, or ACPI 2.0, the system management BIOS, SAL, I don't remember what it is, <laughs> MPS. What I'm going to be interested in specifically is probably just ACPI. There's also JSON config, there's also device tree. If you're on ARM or another platform, you might want to look for the device tree blob, which is a, a flattened format. And the, the device tree spec is pretty short in comparison to ACPI, it's a lot simpler. Um, flattened device tree specifically is just like a, a packed struct pointing to different areas that probably have device data. It seems pretty nice. Uh, you also might find a runtime properties table as one of the configuration tables, and that will say that will give you a bitmap with bits set per runtime service. So if you don't have every runtime service supported, you may want to look for this table. I mean, how would you know unless you look for it? But my devices have supported pretty much everything they haven't included this table but you could check for it if you want to see hey maybe i don't have for some reason the ability to get and set boot variables from get and set variable or maybe i can't set a virtual address map i'm only 
physically allocating things, maybe on some embedded platform. I don't really know. Maybe you don't have reset system and you can't do it that way. You have to go through ACPI. I don't really know, but that's just examples here. But I'll go ahead and I'll get the config table or well, do what I always do. Try to put it on the same screen so it makes a little bit more sense. Would probably be better. And I'll just highlight that, copy it. If I can copy correctly, which I can. There we go. Okay. And I'll just put this down like my other things here. This is in 4.6 or 4.6.1. And we have those there. So I should have all of these definitions and be able to pass things to the kernel. I don't have that defined yet as passing to the kernel, but yeah, I should not have any issues compiling. So I'll grab those and I'll grab some of these standard configuration tables as well. I'll put those wherever my other GUID values are. Maybe I'll make a section here. We'll just say... I don't know, EFI configuration table, <laughs> GUIDs, that's fine. I do want to separate these things out better. I guess other ones I'll put uh, just miscellaneous. We'll do that. Okay. So config table GUIDs, you can try and copy paste this. It's not going to work, but I'll do it anyway because that's what I have been doing. We'll just grab all of them. I will have to change this a little bit from how they have it laid out because they repeated themselves and didn't properly do multiple defines, but I'll fix that in a second. And there's also going to be plenty of config tables on your machine or from your firmware that aren't, you know, part of these uh, five different ones. So that's all right. So we have ECPI 2.0, which is what I'm going to look for as a fallback. You could also look for the regular one in case you don't have a more modern system, I suppose. So for mine, of course, I define the EFI GUID as having a six byte node instead of an eight byte node. So I have to move the brackets over and be annoying like that. But that's how I decided to do my stuff. And that's all right. I could probably do some fancy union stuff and see and make it work a little bit better. This is a parenthesis for some reason, not a brace. That might be the only issue there. And I think down, down here, these are repeated. So you have 1.0 is defined as, I don't want to asterisk there. As ACPI table, that's fine. 2.0 is defined as EFI ACPI table, that's fine. So why did they define these up here as the same ones? They put it twice. These are the same GUID values. <laughs> EFI ACPI 2.0 and this one are the same as these down here. I don't know why they did that in the spec, but I can just say EFI ACPI table so I don't have to define it twice. And then I'll just put them where they where they should be. An ACPI table is already defined. I don't know why they repeated themselves. Maybe it was meant to be a comment or a note, but it was not. But that's all right. I'll just put that here, I guess. Okay, but this is basically just the defaults that the spec gives you, other than the JSON and the other things within that chapter. So I'm going to move that over. I defined my new kernel parameters, so I'm going to pass these things to the kernel. wherever I'm doing that, kernel parms. So I defined an entry point, that's fine. I'm calling it here. All right, so I'll just lay them out here. So my kernel, my kernel parameters here, I don't have runtime services or the others. These are all available from the system table, really, although I have, I think, runtime services. Yeah, I have that defined as a global. I'll define the system table as well, might as well. I'll just say ST. 
and I'll set that when I'm initializing globals. I'll just set it here equals sys table. Okay, so now that I have that, I can use it elsewhere, like when I'm doing this. So I'll say my runtime services will be run. Did I call it run services and not runtime? That's my bad. It's probably meant to be runtime. I would assume. Don't remember, or is it? No, time is lowercase. That's what I meant for it to be. Yeah, time is lowercase. Okay, that's what I meant for that to be. All right, so runtime services, we'll put that here. That'll just equal RS, or you can do STRS, I guess. Well, if I make that a pointer, that's not a pointer, is it? Hmm. Let me make that a pointer. Just so I can, um, just so I can do that. So ST will be... Yeah, because system table I'm passing in as a pointer anyway, so I might as well make that a pointer, yeah. And then this works here. Just do ST to make sure. And that's a pointer, okay. All right, so we can set that to RS or we could do STRS, that's fine. And we have number of table entries. It's gonna be ST number of table entries. And configuration table is going to be the same one here. Configuration table. Okay. Set rest of kernel parameters. Okay. So that way they're passed in, and that should automatically be where my kernel is. Passing in the kernel parms. All right. So I'm not doing anything with these right now, but I could check if runtime services works, for example, by calling... Uh, EFI reset or shutdown. Yeah, RS reset system, because that'll be part of the runtime services that will have been passed right here as part of the kernel parameters. So I can try that, and I can I can actually try waiting a few seconds as well, and just to check that they're working right now. So instead of doing an infinite loop, let's say test runtime services by. Uh, let's say waiting a few seconds and then shutting down. So I'll test that. Which is going to be, I'll need EFI time and I'll need EFI time capabilities. Yeah. And if I want to check a difference between getting a time and setting it every second, I'll say I have two variables, old and new time. Capabilities, I'll say time cap. That's probably fine. And that would be from, not rs, but kargs in this function, because I named it kargs, dot runtime services. And that is a, yeah, that should be a pointer, and then we can call reset from there. All right. So how do I get time again? <laughs> Don't remember, rs get time. All right. So I'm calling old and new time, and that is all right. I'll call it with new time and time cap. Make sure my head's not in the way. Call it with new time and time cap. It needs pointers, so I'm calling it with pointers. And we'll say, say I have zero, or if I wait a few seconds, I could just do a for loop probably. Maybe three seconds, we'll say, or if I keep polling until a second has passed, I don't want it to go on automatically. Eh, I can do a while loop, that's fine. I'll change it if it makes more sense. We'll say while i is less than three. So we'll, we'll call get time in a loop and we'll say if I can set old time to new time, I guess. I can probably say these will be zero to start off. just so I know the initial value. So if I get a new time and it returned correctly, I can check if old time dot, I think second, 
Yeah, if old time dot second is not equal to new time dot second, that means at least one second has passed. I'm assuming just one second has passed. So I'm going to count that as one second passing. And if it hasn't done that, then I won't increase. It'll just keep getting a time until it doesn't equal. And once that hits three times that it increased, or three times that at least one second has passed, then I'm assuming three seconds have passed, and I'll call shutdown. And hopefully that works. At least in emulation, it probably will, if it compiles, which it doesn't. Undefined reference to stack check. So I have some things enabled by default. Some things enabled by default on my Alpine system. Maybe I'm using too much stuff on the stack by default. One way to get around that, which isn't great, but technically, from my kernel, and especially from shutdown here, it's not going to return. I was planning on not returning anyway, so I can just put in another compiler built in and get around that on my my system here. We'll just say built in unreachable should not return. Should not return after shutting down. Yeah. So that'll be all right. And that'll get around the stack check fail check <laughs> there. So if I call the kernel now, it's a flat binary, how I have it. That shuts down immediately, which is probably not good. Oh, because the seconds all yeah, the seconds always don't match because I'm not resetting it. Duh. <laughs> My bad. I want to set them equal, so I can probably do this, or I can just set the seconds equal. I wonder if this will work though. I don't remember if I can do that. Okay. Does it do that anyway? Nope. Okay. Goes on. Yeah, it waits a couple seconds and shuts down. That works. I feel like in C I should not be able to do this, but if the Structs aren't that large. I guess that's an implicit sort of mem copy or something. I could just set the second values equal. I feel like that would be better just for this example. But it should wait one, two, three, approximately. And that should be repeatable. Yeah, it might be two seconds because I do one by default. But anyway, I can see if it takes longer if I do like 10 just to try and check that it's waiting the full amount of time. That definitely takes longer. I think that was 10 seconds. It felt kind of odd. <laughs> QEMU and time emulation might be a little off anyway, but I'll say three seconds. That seems to be all right. So of course that would work. I'm not changing anything about where the runtime services are located in memory or the logic behind them, how they're implemented. Um, later that can change. If I mess with the set virtual address map function within runtime services, so I just want that there now as a sanity check that we can see if it still works later or not. Uh, okay, so I added that in a basic test of checking and passing runtime services. So ACPI, let me add another function to the main menu wherever I have that defined in my main function here. I'll just print a bunch of stuff then, I guess. We'll say print, uh, we'll say configuration tables. I'll do that. Say print config tables. I'll just print the GUIDs, not necessarily the pointer, but maybe I'll take in a key for A for ACPI or something and go on to print basic info that is contained in the ACPI tables, just because I haven't messed with that yet, really. That'd be maybe interesting, maybe not. We'll find out. I'll just take this function here. Well, let me clear the screen, close the event. Let me do that. And we'll return. Success if we get to the end. And I'll press any key to go back. All right. So I'll have something initially. Let's say it'll be I cleared the screen, so I don't have to do that to start. I'll just say configuration table GUIDs. That way I know it's going to be on the screen. Print memory map. Yep, I need to do print config tables. There we go. Not passing anything into it. I probably could. But the system table and co are going to be global, so I can just take it from ST if I need to. So I can do ST number of config tables, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's see. 
just want to make sure the menu works as a sanity check. I have print configuration tables. It does nothing, just says go back. So let's print those out and see where we get. So I can be zero. Configuration tables, or well, number. Number of config, did I not call it that? Is it number of table? Number of table entries. Yeah, that's a uint n. So I'll use a uint n for that. Number of table entries. And I'll print the data for each, I suppose. I don't have a print GUID function, I don't think. So I might want to make something like that. I could probably put it, that would make more sense being in my, my library file, probably. If I have the types defined. Do I have the types defined? I don't have efi.h. Well, this is efi.h, but let me do, in case I put it elsewhere. I'll add pragma once, and that's here. Let's do this here. Does that still compile? Okay, still compiles. So I'll add a, a function probably at the bottom of this, if it works, of course, to um to print config table GUID's values, or really any any GUID value. So print a GUID value. Say if I GUID GUID. Uh, print F, is that defined? That's not defined in here. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I'll put it in here, because printf is not defined in there. Maybe I'll put it in there later. Never mind, I'll just do this in the main file. Print config tables, so I'll just say print GUID. A bool, I guess. Well, this can be a void. It's not going to do much. So I'll print... Um, how do I do it normally? Just Well, just a bunch of U values, really. So like my GUID values here, I'll kind of print how this stuff looks probably. So I'll print a brace and then print four bytes, a comma, and then two bytes, a comma, two bytes, comma. So one byte, one byte, a brace, and then six more bytes. Three, four, five, six, and then double brace. Okay, that'll be all right. So how would I do that if I want four bytes first? I would have to get maybe a pointer to that. So let's say, I'll just have a pointer to that. And I can change how much data I'm doing there. So the first byte, GUID should be, should be 16 bytes in length. Yeah, because that's 12 and then plus, I got two extra ones and then three extra ones, so yeah. So the first byte would be, this would just be one, if I'm doing uint8 at a time. So if I dereference that, I'm going to get one byte. So I don't want to do that, but I can get the address, set it to 32, and then dereference that. There's probably more streamlined ways to do that, but that will get four bytes at that address instead of just one byte at this address. So that was my goal. And then similarly, if I want two bytes at a time, I can take a 16-bit pointer and take the two bytes from that by dereferencing it. And that would be, so 0, 1, 2, 3 would be the first four bytes. So starting at four, we'd have the next two bytes. Should have the next two bytes. And then at six, we'd have the next two bytes. And then I should just be able to print single bytes from then on for the rest. So that's first value, second, third, which are both two bytes. Then the rest are all single byte values. Yeah, so I can just take take the single bytes there. As I put in too many commas, that's all right. Just copy that and say 6p. Well, I didn't want to do that, but that's all right. Cannot type today with Vim. All right, yeah, zero-based indexing, so 15 would be the last one. Okay, 
So this looks a little jank, but that should roughly correspond to the first line and the second line here. Four bytes, two bytes, two bytes, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine I don't need, because this would be six and seven. So this should start at eight. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That looks right. Uh, okay, does that compile? It doesn't like it. Operand is required. I'm trying to get a pointer to that GUID value. It doesn't like that. Operand of type EFI GUID or arithmetic form type. Oh, I have to get the address. <laughs> so that would be a GUID pointer, and then I'd convert that into a UN8 pointer. Yeah, that makes more sense. Okay. So something to print a GUID value we can use to print these GUID values and the pointers if I want to. Probably don't, so that's okay. So I would get ST offset by the configuration table. And then the number in that array according to the table entry would be I. And then that has vendor GUID and it has vendor table. So the vendor GUID would be a GUID. So we can print that, I suppose. So I probably want to print some other stuff there too. Let's say a new line after every one, just to see what that looks like. And then press any key to go back, that'll be on its own line. All right, so how does that look? Did I mess up printing GUID values? I mean, probably a little bit, and that's okay. I did not print them as hex. Yeah, that's an issue. I printed them as unsigned. <laughs> Let me change these to X. That would make more sense. I could just do that and then change that. Okay. Make those hex bytes. That would be a little bit better. Okay, that looks slightly better. Config table GUIDs. So that has a new line but not a carriage return. I can fix that. So I just put an N. That would look better. Okay, so these are my config tables. There's not that many, it looks like, and that's okay. I also have bad values in the at the end there. I'm printing too many bytes, which is interesting. So I messed up the printing. Of course, why would I not mess up the printing? Since these are these are all probably going to be okay. This uh, the X might be assuming 32 bytes by default. So this is not a good way of doing this, but this is a way of doing this which is what this should be doing anyway. I don't know why it would be printing four bytes for the penultimate value. That doesn't make much sense. So I'm printing, what, VAR? So I'm grabbing a UN10. Okay, so I'm assuming I'm grabbing eight bytes is why. I don't have a, a length specifier there, which is not great. I can make a length specifier. Because I think C23 specifies like W and then a bit number, so W32 for 32 bits. So I could do that. Would that be a lot of work right now? Something like, you know, XW32 or something. It's not highlighted, but... Or you have precision. <laughs> I don't really want to mess with that right now. Okay, so what is this doing? It's printing four bytes before the last one. Okay, or eight bytes, really. I don't know why. What happens if I set that to eight explicitly? It doesn't work, okay. <laughs> oh, I wish I was a better programmer. So let me debug that right quick and I'll get back to it. All right, I fixed the issue there with, for whatever reason, the 14th value and not the other ones, I'm printing, you know, four or eight bytes. So I fixed that just by expanding them all <laughs> at runtime. The amount of data that's going to be sent as this argument to print F on the stack is going to be eight bytes at a time, even though it's only a one byte value. So just doing that fixes the issue there. And I should make either separate 
whatever they call these separate format specifiers for widths, or I should add a way to specify a width, like a dot or, you know, a number for a number of digits, for example. But, you know, I didn't do that and that's all right. So, but expanding all of these does work. Other than that, I added a slash R slash N just so I didn't have to do it within the for loop when I'm printing them out. That was the only change there, just expanded them all to eight bits, or well, eight bytes, and now it prints correctly. So I have these values. Of course, these don't mean anything, they're just numbers, unless you have them memorized. So I can also add maybe a helper or something to say what type of GUID it is, maybe like a little lookup table. That thing I could probably add as like a type or a, a static compile time array, we'll say. I'll put it above the functions, maybe. Put it below the type defs. So I'll say, I'll say EFI configuration table GUIDs and string forms, I guess, and string names. That seems re reasonable. So let's say I have two things here for both of those. So I'll say EFI GUID string or something with with string. I don't know. And string. It's not a good name, but you know, whatever. That's what I'll call it here. And we'll have a GUID and we'll have a char 16 T, you know, name or string for that. So that way I can have a sort of compile time array, right? Yeah. So if I GUID with string, we'll have, if I made it full constant, I could call it this. We'll say config table. I guess I'll do underscore config table, GUIDs, strings, I don't know. <laughs> That's a bad name, but whatever. It's, it's, it's descriptive, I think, so. Where's the equal sign? There it is. Equal key. Okay, so GUID, I can add in whatever my config table ones are here, so I'll do that. So we'll just add EFI ACPI table GUID, and these will have to be in braces for initializers. So a struct with these two members will be, the first one can be this GUID, the second one can just be table GUID. There are ways to, you know, construct with X macros or other things. There's ways to use the preprocessor and defines and have macros that do this for you, but I'll just lay it out here so it's kind of explicit. That's fine. I don't want to think about that right now because I don't have as much experience as I would like, but that's okay. So they, they also define 2.0. I'm just going to have it just be ACPI and ACPI without the EFI for X. So then what do we have? SAL, system, table, I'll uh, just do a tab. And then SMBIOS, SMBIOS table, SMBIOS 3, 3 table. I don't know what happened to SMBIOS 2, but it is left out of the conversation. That's okay. And then the MPS, which I don't know what that is either. <laughs> but that's all right. And then there's other ones we could add. On my actual, on my laptop, on my hardware, there's just going to be ones that aren't, you know, part of these. There will be a lot more, possibly. In QEMU, there can be more, although I didn't see that many, but that's okay. Uh, what do we have? If I buffer three, okay. So configuration table i dot vendor GUID. And then I can print the string if we find that within here, I think. I can try that. So we'll say for, say J. I still have my, yeah, my just basic macro, or array length, array element number. I'll say array size of config, table, GUIDs, and strings. So, you know, O of N squared, it's always good. <laughs> But there's not very many things to check here, so that's all right. So if not, say mem compare the config table one with this one. Let's say I have a better name for that. 
just so I don't have to type it multiple times, I'll take the configuration table GUID number that we're on, I'll just add it to GUID so that it is shorter to type there. So if I compare that GUID, well, the pointers with it, with the member in the array, which would be j.guid, probably need that as a pointer. And then the length would be the size of EFI GUID or size of for not type, just the thing itself. So if it's zero, then they match. And I can print out the thing that matches there. Or I'll print something else out. We'll say unknown, I guess. Maybe I'll print it in just to make it look a little bit better in parentheses, I'll say unknown. Yeah, I'll say unknown GUID value. With the new line, else I'll print the thing there. So printf, their char 16t values. And double quote there, so that'll be a string because it'll end implicitly with a null because it's a string literal at compile time. Yeah, I'll just do that and I'll put it in parentheses. So config table, GUIDs and strings, put a new line at the end, J and string. So that's what I called it. Yeah, I called that value string. So, so that'll print the string value within parentheses there. Okay. And I'll see what that looks like. Maybe good, maybe bad. So that'll print the GUID and then this underneath. So I probably will want a new line after that. So I'll print another one just so I have spacing between each entry because it'll be two lines there, I think. So we'll make it three. Incompatible conversion, char 16t to expression 20. Uh, yeah, these need to have use so that they're char 16t literals and not ASCII or UTF-8 literals. That's true. All right, let's see if this loop works here. Did I have to write the file? Does this not work? Oh, this needs to be a pointer. <laughs> not a singular value, but a pointer to a list of char 16t values, which makes a string. And then I need a semicolon because I didn't end it with that. It'd be cool if I knew how to program C, you know. Does that work? That works. All right. All right, let me go back so that the loop is there. So it should print out GUID and then the name and then an extra new line after and then the next one. A lot of unknowns. Okay. So it prints unknown a lot. Uh, because it's going through all of them and printing one per each one. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I did not consider that, did I? That's true. Okay, that's fine. I'll just save the state outside of this and we'll save the value that we found, the array index that we found, we'll say. So if not compare, then I'll say found is true. It's not a great way, but that's fine. Bool found is false. Okay, and then I'll do break. So we'll say less than this and not found. And then I'll break and we'll say if found. And I'll print this here instead. Well, really I can print it probably within here actually. We'll do this, else. Probably not a good way of doing it, but that's all right. <laughs> I like to be fancy for no reason. Then I'll have two. Okay, so that'll print unknown or it'll print the value in the string, which means I don't need this else case here. Found equals true, break. I don't need to break because I have the condition there. And that can be a one-liner. All right. 
So we'll search through the array end early if the name is found, print the name or print unknown, else the name would not be found, it'll print unknown, go to the next one. So we'll see if that works a little bit better. That does work better. We might have missed the first one there because it's I'm printing three lines per value instead of one line, which is the GUID. But at least for these, we have SMBIOS3, SAL system, ACPI, and some unknown ones. Okay. So I can get all of them on the screen by just waiting after a while. So the, de the default screen size is 80 by 24. So three lines, each one would be eight, although I'm printing an initial line and a line at the bottom at the end, so maybe seven. I'll say after every seven, we can pause. So if i is greater than zero and i mod seven is zero, if it's divisible by seven, we've got at least seven lines. And I'll just get a key there to pause, right? In case there's, you know, a whole lot of these. Okay, so it still didn't print the initial one, but that, that's okay. Because if it equals zero, it will pause. I don't really need to print this, I don't think. I could do every six. I'm trying to see if I can get it to where I print the initial title. Okay, there we go. So a little bit less, but that's all right. So I don't know what these are, but we have the SMBIOS 3. We have the SAL system and ACPI table, not the EFI ACPI table, unless I copied it in wrong. An unknown value is extra parentheses there too it's already within these parentheses. Let me get rid of those. I figure I would have ACPI 2.0, unless I copied that incorrectly, which I might have. If I ACPI table 8868E871. I guess I'll look for, for those. I could be printing incorrectly as well. 8868E871, yeah, that says, oh, that just says ACPI table GUID, okay. So I'm defining 2.0 as EFI. This is not correct, that's interesting. EFI and ACPI are two separate entries. So why am I finding this one when I mean to be printing this one? That's interesting. I don't see why it would be printing one for the other, unless it's printing one off, which it shouldn't be. So I set J to zero every time. Oh, it increments, it increments J and then does not found, I think. That would make sense, yeah. Because it increments j that time. Okay, so if not, I could do j minus 1 within here, or I could do it within here, or I could just break. Uh, which would be fine. I'll, I'll break instead. Because you're not programming C unless you have an off by one error, you know. <laughs> it'll increment, and then it'll check the, the body again. It'll do the comparison and go on again if, if it was true, I think. I don't know, we'll see. Changing the break condition. Yeah, no, that was correct. See, now that uh, the second one from the bottom has EFI ACPI, so I was one off. You know, it's C, you get off by one errors. So I know we have ACPI 2.0 and up and some other ones. If you're wondering what these other ones are, I mean, you can add them to your own array or you can look them up. Let's say the last one here, DCFA911D. DCFA911D, repeat it so I remember. Looking at my test code from earlier because I was wondering why I messed up printing. Uh, if you're wondering what those are, the only real actual repo I've found so far that just has a big list, even though it's nine years old, <laughs> is uh, is this page, which they, I think, data scraped EDK2 at the time, and they have a bunch that are in here. So I could try searching for them in here. And I don't see the DCFA if that was correct. The other thing you can do is search with basically the the Tiano Core repo because most things that are existing and on a wide scale will be within EDK2. So you can just search for the four bytes and see if they pull up. And yeah, see, 
This one pulls up, for example, EFI memory attributes table GUID. So if you have unknown config tables or other GUID values in general, I would recommend searching for just maybe the first four bytes, if not, you know, more bytes in the sequence with the 0x uh, within the EDK2 repo on GitHub or elsewhere. And you, you should be able to find the GUID values if, if they're in there. Otherwise, they're probably really vendor specific, like Dell or HP or something specific to their hardware, maybe that specific platform, like a laptop or, or single board computer or some embedded system. So you might not find all of them there, but that's a good, for me, a good rule of thumb or heuristic to use. If I don't know what something is, I can search for it with an EDK2, their repo, because they probably have an idea. Uh, but anyway, that's some values there. I know I have the ACPI table. So if I want to search for stuff for that, I could make a thing for that. Maybe a separate value on the main menu just to mess with, for example. I can look at ACPI a little bit uh, before I end this part. I know I haven't done anything but print values, but you know, that's that's how stuff works sometimes. <laughs> I won't print all of the tables most likely, but I'll have something to print some of them, I guess. We'll just say print ACPI tables, that's fine. Copy my sort of template for these things here. Okay. So let's say... ACPI info. I will want to get the ACPI table, so I'll just have a little helper function for that, probably. That does what this, what this loop does. I won't print the stuff out, but I'm just going to copy that right here. And I'll say... Maybe void or EFI status or bool. I'll make it a boolean. Say git config table by GUID. And I'll just search through the tables here. And if I find them, then I will have found them. So I'm searching through these tables and strings. Well, I'm just going to get this one and probably just compare. Yeah, I'll just do a mem compare. Move that out of the way so I can look at this. So I'm just going to do a mem compare against the current GUID and the config table against some other one that we want to compare against here. So I'll say, you know, vendor. So vendor GUID against the input GUID. And if we found it, then we found it. Maybe I can return. I could probably just return the config table, really. Or do I want to return? Well, I have the GUID. I could return the data for that GUID, which would be a void pointer. So I'll do that instead. All right, so let's return not console configuration table i dot vendor table. There we go. So that's a void pointer. Yeah, so that's simple enough. And then if we didn't return the table, then we didn't find it within all of the configuration table entries. So I'll return null. Did not find... Yeah, did not find config table. Okay. That's reasonable enough. Okay. If I have issues from that, redefinition of this, uh, print config tables. Oh, this is going to be print. ACPI tables, that's why. <laughs> that makes more sense. Okay. So, of course, this, I can look through those. ACPI tables doesn't do anything. Just making sure that that's all right. Okay. So, void pointer ACPI is going to be the RSDP. That's going to be the root system description pointer, a root system description table pointer. 
however I want to say that that is. I'm going to say that's from git config table by GUID, and we'll look for uh, EFI ACPI table GUID or 2.0, because that'll be a constant GUID value. Yeah, just there on the stack. Does that work if I do that? It's not get expanded because it's a macro. Um, okay, that's fine. I'll just do it this way. So I'll say if not RSDP, then I'll search for the other one. And I'm gonna put how I how I know this. I'm gonna show you in a second. I just want to make sure this compiles first. search for ACPI GYD equals ACPI table. So this will be the 1.0. And if we don't find that one, If I don't find that one, then we'll say that's not good. Just return one. Um, I'll print an error here. Which I have as eprintf, or do I have just an error function? I do. Let's do that. Error, I'm printing error. Do I not print error as part of that? I don't. Okay. I should print the word error as part of that function, but anyway, that's fine. Go back where I was in the jump list. There we go. Okay. So we'll say error could not find ACPI configuration table. That's fine. And error should get a key, and then we'll return, else we'll print info down here. Okay. Expected expression. Uh, yeah, because I have to set that. Okay, mem set. Can I do that? Probably not. Oh, I have designated initializers. Yeah, that's fine. Can I do that? Yes, I can. <laughs> Looks like I'm casting it. Okay, so I know that I found the table and that the other function works because I have that. Okay, so how do I know to look for the ACPI info here starting off the RSDP? In the ACPI specification, you know, ACPI spec, which is from the same the same uh, website as the UEFI specification. So I'm looking at the 6.5 release. And it's a big spec, and I'm not going to look at everything within the spec, but in Chapter 5, the Software Programming Model 5.2, the System Description Tables 5.25, the Root System Description Pointer, and during OS initialization, this is OS power management, which just means your operating system, your kernel, your EFI application, that's all OSPM means. But what you should do is obtain the root system description pointer if you want to use ACPI. From the platform, when it locates it, it locates the description table, or the extended one, 64-bit, using the physical address supplied in the RSDP. So if you have everything memory mapped, like UEFI does, um, identity mapped, rather, then the physical system on boot is going to be your virtual address unless you change it later. So that's okay. That'll be the physical address. So IAPC is the old BIOS way of finding it, which is searching for data within these memory ranges. On UEFI systems, you have to retrieve it from the system table and convey the pointer. It locates the pointer by examining the configuration table with the EFI system table. The configuration table entries are GUID table pointer pairs. There's one for ACPI 1.0 and 2.0 and later. And this just repeats the ones that are also in the UEFI spec. So the 1.0 pointer is here, 2.0 pointer is here, and these are specified to be the RSDP structure. So it's a pointer, a void pointer, to memory that contains the RSDP. And we can also prove that by printing the signature and the other data in here if you want. So RSD space pointer space should be for the RSDP at that memory location. So I'll just do that as a sanity check. 
Depends if I want to print multiple stuff at once. Let's just do, uh, I know it's ACPI by going to this function from the main menu. So let's say RSDP. And yeah, I'll do that. Say signature. It should be a string. It should be eight bytes, really. So this would be good to have, you know, an eight or a way to specify the length <laughs> in the string, but that's that's okay. I could also, since it's eight bytes, I could just set it as an eight byte value, and that should be okay. Uh, but it has to end with a null byte, so actually no, that would not be okay. I mean, I can print eight characters. It's kind of annoying though, but that's okay. This is not this is not a good way of doing this. I don't recommend doing this, but oh well. We have a void pointer to RSDP. So let's do UN8 RSDP, which I called RSDP already. Um, I'll just do that. Not a great way of doing it, but that's okay. So UN8T, since this is a void pointer, I don't have to cast it. We'll just grab the data there. These are not good names. Sorry about that, but that's okay. And we'll just print 0 through 7, probably. So we'll print that, and 7p. That should be OK. So 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Should have put spaces there. 4, 5, 6, 7. That's all I'm doing. Declared, I have it here. Does it say if not at 2374? Oh, here? Yeah, because this needs to be pointer. All right, signature RSD space pointer space. So we're good there. We found the RSDP, so that's good. I suppose I could print if it's ACPI 1 or 2. That might be good. So if not, um, then we'll print that. If not, else we found it. I don't like doing this kind of backwards, but that's okay. So let's do percent %x. This will be a uint in value. And this I'll just print RSDP pointer. So that's if it did find the 1.0 table. And I'll do a similar thing for this one. So this is not, again, a good... I don't like printing things this way because it seems kind of backwards, but that's okay. So I'll do that. Just print the values of the pointers there. So 2.0 table found it, F770014. So I think that's correct. Print seven instead of eight bytes, but that's whatever. So we have RSDP as a signature and the other stuff. Okay. Okay. So what do I want to print after that? I'll move the ACPI table there. Checksum, that's fine. OEMID, if it has something, we have a four byte string for that. That's probably okay. Revision, current value is 2. I guess if it's 1.0, we only include 20 bytes, else we know it's 2.0. I could print if it's 1 or 2. Uh, let's have you int it. Well, I could have bool 1 or 2. Let's say 2.0. Okay. That way I'll know whether to check with the Boolean. If ACPI 2.0, then I'll know the size of the table and other things within the specification. So I have the RSDT, the length, XSDT. I could print them both just to make sure. So 
So length is in bytes, including the header four. So this is, okay, RSDT is four bytes. Length is four bytes. So OEM ID is at byte length, byte offset six. Sorry, it's at byte offset nine and the length is six, okay. I'll look into having a length specifier for printf between this and the next episode, because that would make stuff like this a lot easier. <laughs> so it's at byte offset nine. The length is six, all right. So I'll copy that with the space and do 5p, which I didn't want the new line there, but that's all right. Three, four, five, six, okay. So RSDP, where the RSDT address is at byte offset 16, and it is four bytes in length. So I can get a 32 bit pointer to that single byte address and print the 32 bytes, the 32 bits there by doing that. Dereferencing it, length is also four bytes. And length is at byte offset 20. Okay, what else? XSDT will do. XSDT is eight bytes at 24. So I can do 64, you and N. Extended checksum and reserved, I'm not gonna worry about. Okay, so we'll see what that looks like right now. Need a comma there, but after the string literal. HCPI 2.0, yep, not using that right now. That's okay, because I know I have 2.0. All right, OEM ID is box, which is interesting because I'm on QEMU. <laughs> I guess the OVMF data is made for box as well. RSDT and XSDT are different, which is interesting. Length is 36. So what do I have reserved as the three byte, well, the three byte reserved field, so it should be 36. That makes sense. That looks correct. I could print the checksums, I guess, if I wanted after the signature, just to make sure that the data is correct. That's one byte. Yeah, one byte at byte offset eight. Okay. I'll just print a U then, I guess. Make sure it doesn't do weird stuff with that. Okay. And extended checksums after, after XSDT, and that is one byte at 32. And I'll just do this. Get rid of that comma. Okay, so that's basically the table there. So, you know, manual seri serializing, deserializing of data in C. Not great, but anyway. Checksum 134, 158. That doesn't seem correct because it should be zero. Oh, I suppose if you put the checksum so that you add up the bytes and they equal zero, that would make sense. Okay, so never mind. That probably makes sense. That's that, so we can worry about the XSDT. I guess this is assuming it's ACPI 2.0, because these are more not available in the other one. Suppose I can check that. Although I shouldn't have like a really old version. I think 64-bit probably doesn't matter, but I guess if I want to support both, I would do that. And this only goes up to the, so it doesn't have the last three. Okay. That's easy enough to do. So system description table. I'm not going to go through all of these. I just wanted to show like an example. That's the RSDP. We could look at the XSDT. 
This is just a common header for everything. And then we have all the other functions that we can, all the other tables we can look at, like that have these signatures. So really you can go through and just print all these out yourself. There are some key ones you probably want to look at by checking the signature. And then you'd go through the length to know how much actual data is beyond the revision here, the 32 byte header. So stuff that you might want to look at, APIC for uh, for interrupt controllers. You may or may not need to look at boot record stuff. Differentiated system description table is important. Fixed API description table is important. Control structure, I think, is also important. And other ones I'm sure are important, maybe NVDIM, not OM specific, that I care about. XSDT, of course. SRAT, I think, can come up. I mean, you may, you may want to look at all of these, too. It depends. Some of these are not as important as the others. So what does the root system describe? The root system description table, what does it contain? It basically contains a bunch of addresses that point to other description headers. <laughs> the extended one is in 64-bit memory, most likely. Both of them must be pointed to if the XSDT is there. And it has eight byte pointers instead of four byte pointers. So basically the root system description table or the extended, script, extended system description table is where you go to find all of the other tables. <laughs> basically the FACT, FACS, whatever, all these other ones. And all of those other ones, you know, including and after the XSDT should have this header as well. So let's say XSDT, for example, section 528, the signature will be XSDT. So we can go ahead and do that. Uh, I suppose I should like press a key to print the next one and then go on or go back because this will be a big function that's just printing stuff, which probably isn't too bad. It's kind of annoying. could put it into um, my lib header instead. I don't really know, but I could, I could spend some time just printing these tables out. I don't know if I want to do that or not, but that's just the initial getting the info for ACPI, really. Let's say if we get a key and it's escape, we can go back. Right, I can just return and then make like a menu system for printing the other tables. Uh, yeah, I could do that. Okay. So I don't print one. Let's say we get a key. So press any key to print. Let's say RSDT XSDT. And then I'll basically do that. Uh, this will be excess DT. We'll go from there. Okay, so let's look at that. So the header that they all share is this 32-byte header field. So I can add that in efi.h or efi-live.h. So I can try that. Let's put that under this thing here, maybe, or above. Uh, I'll put it below. That's fine. This is just description header. Let's say ACPI description header, just to make sure it's good. I'll make sure it's packed. You want 32 signature, I suppose, although it's kind of a string, but it's four bytes. So I'll say that's fine.
Signature length revision. We have a checksum. OEM ID is six bytes. I could uh, I could make these byte strings really. Make them big Indian style. <laughs> Okay, OEM ID is six bytes, OEM table ID. Is eight bytes. All right, and 16. That is also a string to identify a particular table. And we have a revision. Revision is four bytes. Say that's just four bytes. We have a creator ID, that's four bytes. And creator revision. Okay, so we have a packed header that we can put in front of everything, at the start of everything in memory for a specific table, rather. Okay, so what does that mean, ACPI description header? Uh, let's make a pointer for that, actually. So that will be ACPI description header for wherever the address is for the XSDT, which is going to be this RSDP pointer offset wherever this address is, which is 24. So I'll do that. So RSDP, and I can convert pointers and cast them, that's okay. Uh, 24, so the address of that is going to be UN8 pointer. Well, I want the data there. That would be eight bytes. I want the eight bytes of data there. So I have to do fancy stuff like that, which is not great. Um, it's probably all right. So let's do, you want 64, I'll say XSDT address, and that'll be this data. Second from the last, yeah. Okay, and then the header can be a description header to that XSDT address. Okay, so that should work. So the header for the XSDT, for example, we can look at that, which will go all the way down to this revision. And then after that, we have entries. We'll look at the entries after that point. Okay. Then I can just print those values here. Signature, again, it's going to be four bytes because I do this a horrible, horrible way. And the header is not an eight byte. Uh, okay. I need a better way to convert ints to strings, really. That's all right. Header dot, header dot signature, right? Yeah, should be four bytes, um, but I have a byte string. Yeah, so I can do zero, one, two, three, four. Yeah, that'll be all right. Three, zero, one, two, three, okay. And I can print similar info out for all this. So I could have like a print header helper, which might be good because all the first 32 bytes are going to be the same. That probably would be good. So I have EFI Live included up here. Yeah, so the types would be in there. Uh, yeah, that'll be all right. I have a lot of print helpers. That's fine. So other languages do this better, where you can have automatic derivation and 
and debug printing and everything a lot easier and see it's it's all manual which is not not great but that's okay yeah it's 32 bytes so it works for acpi 1.0 or 2.0 yeah i don't need separate functions for those okay so acpi i think i called it uh, acpi description header header and i'll just grab what i was going to do there Okay, so let's signature. Well, I'll do this stuff, I guess. Signature. Well, we'll have length. We'll have different values. Visions could be one byte. OEM ID, OEM. Table ID, revision. This is going to be probably the last thing I do on this video, so if it's very boring, then you'll have surely clicked off like five hours ago. That's okay. <laughs> not the not the best stuff, but that's all right. So I'll have the signature. We'll have whatever comes after that. The length, which I thought was length. Yeah, length revision. Okay. Which will be, I can say, explicitly 32 in case it tries to put 8 bytes on the stack. Enter dot revision, which is going to be a singular byte. But I can make sure it's actually a full amount of bytes. Revision, check some OEM ID. Which is six bytes. Yeah, six bytes. Okay. That's one and five P. There we go. It's going to be bad, bad way of doing this. That's all right. Here, one, two, three, four, five. Table ID is eight bytes. Manufacturer model ID. Must match in the fixed ACPI description table. That's interesting. I don't know if the model ID is going to be like a string or not, because the OEM ID, I believe, is a string. I don't know if the table ID is a string, actually. Who knows? I did eight. And I called it table ID that's zero one two three four five which is kind of going off a little bit six and seven and we have the revision Four bytes. I have the creator ID and creator revision. It was everything right. So signature, revision. So signature, length, revision, checksum, OEM ID, OEM table ID, OEM revision. Yeah, and then creator ID and revision. Okay. Creator ID is just 32. This is the ID for the ASL compiler. Hmm. I don't know. I guess that's just the 32-bit number. Some of these, I don't know if they're strings or not. It doesn't say that they're strings, so I guess they're not, but I'm not ex absolutely sure. I guess if it's gibberish, I can change them to not be sort of byte values that are broken out like this. Because that's not really the best way to do things, probably, but oh well. Uh, okay. Then we have entries, and okay. We're an ACPI table header. So 
So we have the header, print ACPI table header given the header, which header is a pointer, so I'll have to print the actual value there, or I can pass in a pointer, which is fine. Just means all the dots have to be arrows, so never mind, I'm not going to do that. Pass in the data at the header, that's fine. So the entries, the entries will be other description table headers. So I'll do that, I guess. So it's eight by N. So I know the length, the length implies the number of entries minus, so the size of the header which is going to be 36, not 32, 36 bytes in size. Each entry will be 8. So I would be less than length, because the length implies the number of entries, length and bytes of the entire table. Okay. So header length minus size of header. I plus equal eight. That seems reasonable. Well, really I could do, okay. Header length minus size of header divided by eight. I could do that. Just for a one-to-one, -one, this is one entry at a time sort of math there. That future to do's there. Okay. Each entry would be after the header. So I'll just say an entry pointer. I'll do that. It should be, be a void pointer. Well, it's eight bytes at a time, 64 bit physical addresses. Okay. So I could do physical address, or you want 64 because it's 64 bits. And that would be header plus plus. <laughs> I could do that. No, I'm not going to do that. I could do header plus one. Because that's going to take in pointer arithmetic, which is not great, but that's okay. Because it's the size of a header, really. Yeah, pointer arithmetic's not great, but I'm getting really tired here. My brain's not working, so of entries. Okay, so then I'll start off where that starts off at would be I. I will start off at zero. That is an address. I could look at that address and get a header because that's what's going to be there, really. I could just print the signature right now just to see what all is available there. So I'll say table header that would be a pointer to entry i. Entry i is going to be dereferencing because of this, subscript syntax. So that would get eight, eight bytes. I'm taking that eight bytes and getting a pointer to it for a table header. And then I can just print the signature there. Or I can print the, the, all the, the entry for right now. The whole header entry, rather. So I'll say print more than only signature, but I'll see what tables are there right now. Yeah, and the signature would just be four bytes, so that's okay. One, two, three, four. So I'll say table header dot signature zero, one, two, three, four.
Okay. We'll see what that looks like. I'll move this back to four. So this is what I'm doing here, printing the excess DT by getting the address where the header's at, printing that header info, then the entries after. I'm printing those and I'll probably, I might get a key before printing that. Well, I'm printing this. I'll get another key. Just to see what this looks like. And if there's a lot of them, then I'll get a another key every so often, like I did for the other stuff. So I'll just see how this looks first. Expected to match 2375 here. I, know, I always forget the comma after the string literals. And again, right there. Header plus one oh doesn't like it. That's true. Uh that's fair. Um, I mean I can even do this. If I want to be very explicit, I can do this. So change change this to a one byte pointer. And then add the size of header to get the, the data after that. Right after that. Uh, incompatible type dereference with star. But I want the eight bytes there. Okay. Oh, um, I want a pointer, duh. Sorry. Okay, I thought I had to dereference to get eight bytes again and then call a pointer to that. Maybe I will, but no. I have to get a pointer to that. I need to actually have a pointer for the type. That makes sense. And then this won't be a dot. It'll be an arrow, yeah. Okay, so if I wanted the data, then I would just have to dereference that. Okay, which is what the error was saying, but anyway. All right, what does that look like? Press any key to print, RSDT, XSDT. Signature, XSDT, length 84. So 84 minus 36, which would be 54 minus six, which would be 48. So there should be six entries. OEM ID is 66, table ID 79, revision. OEM ID is not printing right, I don't think, because there's more than one byte there. Oh well, I'm not printing that correctly, but we do have entries which are printing correctly. So what I have is FACP, APIC, HPET, MCFG, WAET, BGRT, ACB, D, EFG, HIJK, LMNOP, you know, I got all these. What is a BGRT? What is a, a braggart? What is that? Just for example, I have the WA. Windows ACPI emulated device table. Ooh. The UEFI specification. We have a specification included as a table in ACPI, which is included as a config table from the UEFI spec. Is that recursion? That's how recursion works, right? <laughs> What is the BGRT? That's not even in here. Is that correct? Is that a bad table? BG, oh wait, BGRT. Boot graphics resource table. That's interesting. An image was drawn on the screen. Oh, you can get information for like a splash screen. Okay. I can look into that stuff later. But anyway, that's in the ACPI spec. And then, you know, you can look at those tables and print them out. I'll probably make more code to do that. OEM ID I thought was supposed to be more than one byte, unless I messed that up. No, OEM ID is just one byte. Although I'm printing all of these out, so it's not correct. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, yes. Let's see if that is actually correct for string value. Header has four, then three, then six, and then table ID is eight. 1 and 7p. Nope. I want to actually copy that and do 7p. That's reasonable. Or was it 7? 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8. eight. Okay, and then revision and then those. All right. That should look a little better now that I have the strings laid out. 
Okay, that looks a little bit better, yeah. OEM ID for XSDT's box, like the original HPI table one up above for the XSDT. The RSDP, rather, that has box. XSDT also has box. OEM table ID is BXPC, which that may actually need to be a 32-bit value. That could be just bad data. Creator ID and revision, I probably should print as hex. That would make more sense there. That probably makes more sense for those to be hex. I don't really know. Maybe they're just bad values. I'll have to look up other examples online to see if I should print some of these things as strings or not. But anyway, I know I have these tables, so I can go on to print info about those tables if they're found. You know, I could print supported table headers and stuff, or just skip it if I don't have them, for example. So that prints the entries. If I have a lot more entries, then I guess I could get a key after. So I would like the user to be able to choose one of these to print from then on. But I could do that either in another video or just off screen. I'll probably do it off screen, off camera, because I don't really feel like going through that right now. So I want to do other important stuff like maybe set up paging and set up runtime virtual address map as part of uh, setting up virtual memory as part of paging for x86. So 64 bit as level four, level five paging that I want to set up and remap our kernel or whatever loaded program you want to jump to, remap that to a high address in 64-bit memory and set up paging to facilitate that and also so we can get full control over the memory um, as far as permissions. So it, not every entry in memory is guaranteed to be readable and or writable and or executable. You can set that up on your own and so I can show how to do that. Set up level 4 paging which should be supported by default. Level 5 we could check for with CPU ID but to be able to change to level 5 from level 4, vice versa, 64-bit long mode doesn't have a way to do that without faulting and, and resetting the CPU, so we'll have to set up a GDT regardless to get full control over memory in our system. We'll set up a global descriptor table and paging, maybe not interrupts, you can do that later in your kernel, um, but at minimum those things, and load the kernel to a higher address, map it there, and jump to it. We can remap the runtime, memory for the runtime services to different virtual addresses or just identity map everything again to be easy with it um, and then still be able to call runtime services from the loaded kernel so we could do that but yeah I'll, I'll add more code to print acpi info for the available tables and stuff but all it's going to be doing is printing values from structs so serializing deserializing data just printing the values and i'll try and look up if some things should be strings or or ints or whatnot and print the correct values there, but I'll do that off camera. So hopefully this showed a little bit of how to get into ACPI, which I do it boring and very slow. And yeah, it's just, it's just printing values to the screen. <laughs> but anyway, C gives you full control over memory. So I'm just inspecting that at runtime is all I'm doing. Uh, but regardless, hopefully that was okay. Just adding stuff and printing ACPI info as a start. I'll add more stuff there and I'll get into yeah, setting up paging in a GDT on the next one, and if that doesn't take too long, and I don't have a one after that, then I'll set up and look at boot variables. If not, I want to look at the boot variables from uh, runtime services after that video. Because then I can use the boot variables and change the order or set up new ones to then make a boot entry for this bootloader, you know, this OS and then, so if I make or change the boot order and I make a new boot variable for this OS, this loaded kernel, then you should be able to choose that from your machine after reboot or set it as the first one and have it boot that automatically. And then I can set up like a file or something that's created that says this is installed. So I don't go through the UEFI. I just go directly to the loaded kernel after setting up paging and everything. So I'll get to that on the next video or two. And yeah. As my voice is dying, I need to drink water and do something else, so I'll do that. Thanks for watching. This is a longer video, but that's life. <laughs> As one small addendum, I'm trying out different things, of course. So, as it gets toward nighttime here, I'm trying out, so we'll see how the, how the uh, quality and everything works, but I am trying out AV1 Capture. So I'm on Linux still. I'm on Alpine Linux, running on bare metal for my desktop. 
Um, it did not have OBS 30 or 30.1.2, so I had to build that myself. I, I used their A ports to do that to be able to get AV1 because I wanted to try it out. It's an open standard as far as not having like royalties, I think, like HEVC and stuff. And it uses less bitrate for the same quality. And I have hardware that has hardware encoders. I wanted to try that out. So uh, the only settings I did was main. Main's the only profile I can choose. I'm not messing with any specific FFmpeg options, but I do want to look that up later. Um, I basically left things default other than the level is 5.1 because I record at 4K60 and it looked like that was a, an example for level 5.1. So I said, okay, I'm at 4K60. I'll use that. CQP is what I usually use. And QP16 is what I was using for H.265 or HEVC recording. So this is similar data here. At night, especially in dimmer settings, it uses a lot less bitrate. So the file size will be smaller. Hopefully it doesn't add too much smudging or bad looking stuff to the video. If the visual quality is similar and, and YouTube's compression doesn't, you know, crush everything to crap and make it look bad, then I'll use AV1 going forward because it just saves me on file size and rendering and everything. Assuming my editor, DaVinci Resolve, works for AV1 and that's all good. Um, so yeah, I'll do that. But anyway, that's separate from the video. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Uh, cheers.